a bunch of teams are on fire as the season comes down to the wire. It was an August that had it all, as we once again bring you the very best of Wiffle Ball. So get ready for the show that tells you everything you need to know on this month in Wiffle Ball. The Giants kicked off August with their 10th win of the season thanks to a convincing win over the Cardinals. Week nine, they would get past the Padres thanks to Phil Frazello and Ryan McElrath home runs. Week 10, they would split with the Diamondbacks, and this time, Tim McElrath would deliver the long ball, but Ryan McElrath was the headliner, going 15 up and 15 down for the third perfect game of his career. Ryan McElrath has been a big reason why the 12 and 8 Giants are currently in second place. He is among the league leaders in average, hits, and RBI. On the carpet, he leads the league with a 0.56 ERA and will be looking for his 10th win of the season when he takes on the Dodgers in a two-game set this Sunday. Johnny Costa has been having a phenomenal season and took it to the next level in August. On the carpet, he picked up a pair of wins, and at the plate, he led the Dodgers to victory with this walk-off home run against the Royals, this two-run shot against the D-backs, and another walk-off home run against the Brewers. Tim Trenary chipped in with a pair of wins of his own, and Whiffman is looking like he may pick up his third straight batting title. At 15 and five, the Dodgers are the one seed regardless of what happens week 11, and are poised to make a run at their second championship since 2015. Garrett Torres has had a renaissance season for the Diamondbacks. Though the wins aren't there, and the strikeouts are down, he is pitching to a 1.11 ERA. It is the lowest of his career and half the ERA of any of his last three seasons. The D-backs are in the middle of the pack when it comes to runs scored, but Rich Gallad and Devin Torres are getting it done time and again with the long ball. With eight home runs apiece, they are just two games behind the leader with two games to go, and they face him in a game that will determine their seating on Sunday. Let's fucking go! That's what I'm fucking talking about. Anthony Didio leads the league with 10 home runs and 24 RBI, and is a big reason the Expos still have a shot at a first round bye. Things look bleak when minor league team Boys With Feelings was called to cover for the Expos week 10. Fortunately for the Expos, Tim Caulfield and Chris Lieb came through with home runs early. And then Tim Caulfield was able to slam the door on the Padres. With the Expos back to full strength week 11, all eyes will be on field three when they take on the D-backs in the game of the week. Daniel Whitener was a godsend for the Yankees. With a pair of no-hitters in August, Whitener stepped up while Mike Wiener was shelved during the stretch run. Maniscalco also picked up some of the slack with a win over the Royals to save their season. With just two games left against the last place Astros and the Yankee bats heating up, a sweep will lock up a spot for the suddenly surging Yankees. After going 0-6 in August, there isn't a lot to say about the Astros, but they have played teams tight. If Bobby Daly can find the right pieces in the draft, they may be able to turn it around in 2018. On the surface, the 3-3 August was pretty respectable for the 7-13 Brewers, until you factor in that all three wins were against the 2-14 Astros. Like the Astros, the Brewers are looking to the future. Unlike the Astros, the Brewers have a young starter in Ryan Patron who has had success. If he can improve and the Brewers draft wisely, maybe they can get back to the postseason in 2018. At 6-14, the Cardinals are a team in transition, but they have shown they can beat anyone. In early August, they outlasted the Giants with a pitching gem from Rob Longeroux and a timely home run from Kevin Norris. Week 9, Chris Morris got a pair of runs early and was able to hold the Expos to just a run. Though it looks like they may get the second pick in the draft, they may not need it if they can get their full roster to more games in 2018. The Mariners turned it around and were the hottest team in August. They picked up five wins over the month and won in every way possible. With a John Historico shutout of the Yankees, a Scott Fleeser cycle, a Matt Fleeser grand slam, and then a Scott Fleeser walk off against the Cardinals. Though not mathematically eliminated from postseason contention, the Mariners will need a sweep and a lot of help to get in. The Royals did what they needed to do by going four and two in August. They picked up a split with the Dodgers thanks to this Nick Martinez walk off home run got a huge home run by Frank Calais to beat the Giants 1-0, and punished the Yankees 7-1 in a must-win to keep their postseason hopes alive. 
But through it all, Oliver Avalone has been the key to the Royals' success. With a league-leading 10 wins and 158 strikeouts, Avalone will be called on to win two more games this Sunday against the league's stingiest pitching staff. The Padres once looked like a contender, but after a 2-4 and four August, they will need at least a win against the Royals to get into the postseason. Their pitching is still among the league's best. The combo of Kyle Von Sussingen and Jordan Robles have combined for over 200 strikeouts and have only allowed 11 runs in 15 games. Robles has also had a breakout year at the plate, hitting seven home runs and driving in 19. If the Padres could score a few more runs, they will be tough to handle in the postseason. Here's a look at the standings with just two games left in the regular season. That's all for now. Join us next time as we recap the 2017 postseason on This Month in Wiffle Ball. This program is brought to you by Curdy's Landscaping. And use promo code PALISADES at Excursions Journey to Health for a 10% discount.